Welcome back to Immortal News. As we gather today, our hearts are heavy with the weight of loss. We take a moment to reflect upon and honor the memories of 12 iconic figures who have recently left us. Their contributions and legacies have touched countless lives, and their departures, especially that of September 5th, are deeply felt by families, friends, and fans worldwide. In today's bulletin, we also bring you crucial health updates, the close call Arnold Schwarzenegger faced, and an update on First Lady Jill Biden's health. Additionally, we delve into the tragic loss of Hugh Douglas, the son of the former Eagles defender. But before we delve deeper, we'd be grateful if you could tap the thumbs up button. Your engagement means the world to us. If you feel compelled, the thanks button is another way to show your support. A big shout out to our recent supporters. Your backing propels us forward and keeps the essence of immortal news alive. Number 12. Russell Boone, a voice for New York City's diverse communities. Russell Boone, a prominent and award-winning TV anchor and reporter, died on Sunday at the age of 48, NY1 announced. Boone had been battling pancreatic cancer for the past year. She joined NY1 in 2002 as a reporter focused on Queens and later moved to the anchor desk with a noon slot in 2021. Boone had a unique talent for connecting with New Yorkers both on and off screen. She was known for her coverage of New York City's diverse immigrant communities and significant events, including Superstorm Sandy and the protests following the killing of George Floyd. She was also present at major celebrations like the West Indian American Day Parade and the Times Square New Year's Eve ball drop. Boone had the distinction of being the only TV reporter at Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's primary election party in 2018, capturing the moment when the underdog candidate learned of her victory. Throughout her career, Boone was honored with multiple awards, including a New York Press Club Award for Best Feature Reporting and a New York Emmy Award for her series New York Unfiltered. After her cancer diagnosis in 2022, she took a leave of absence for chemotherapy treatments, but remained an inspiration to her audience and colleagues alike. Boone's tenacity and talent made her a trusted voice in journalism, leaving an indelible mark on the communities she covered. She is survived by her husband, Todd Boone, and two sons. Her legacy will continue to inspire those who knew her and the countless viewers who felt like they did through her impactful storytelling. Tribute to Russell. Number 11. Gary Wright, the dream weaver of rock and soul. Gary Wright, the influential musician and singer best known for his iconic hits Dreamweaver and Love is Alive, passed away at the age of 80 on September 4th. Wright was born in New Jersey and was a child actor on Broadway before deciding to study medicine in Berlin. However, music eventually won his heart. He first gained prominence as a founding member of the UK-based band Spooky Tooth, catching the eye of Island Records founder Chris Blackwell. Under his aegis, the band released two albums, It's All About and Spooky 2, which were critical successes that paved the way for extensive session work for Wright. His collaboration with the Beatles, especially George Harrison, was one of the most defining periods of his career. Wright played on all of Harrison's solo albums, beginning with the seminal 1970 work All Things Must Pass, and was a frequent collaborator with Ringo Starr as well. His friendship with Harrison was not just professional but also spiritual, as both shared an interest in Eastern religions and even traveled to India together. Wright's most significant commercial success came with his 1975 album The Dream Weaver, which yielded two mega-hits that have since become staples of classic rock. The album's title track was inspired by his spiritual journey to India with Harrison. Although he couldn't replicate this success in subsequent albums, his influence never waned. His music continued to be covered by various artists, most notably Chaka Khan's rendition of Love is Alive. In his later years, Wright focused on instrumental and soundtrack work, made a memorable cameo in the 1992 film Wayne's World, and released several albums, the last being Connected, in 2010. He even reformed Spooky Tooth in 2004 and toured extensively both as a solo act and with Ringo's all-star band. 
Gary Wright is survived by his son Dorian and leaves behind a legacy that stretches from rock to soul to spiritual exploration. His songs, like Dream Weaver, have transcended time and genre, offering both a musical and mystical experience to listeners. His indelible impact on music will continue to reverberate for generations to come. Tribute to Gary Wright. Number 10. Lefty SM, a pioneering voice in Mexican urban rap, Juan Carlos Sauceda, better known by his stage name Lefty SM, was tragically shot and killed on September 2nd near his home in Zapopan, Jalisco, Mexico, at the young age of 31. The incident occurred around 10.50 p.m. when three armed assailants attempted to forcibly remove him from his home. After a struggle, they opened fire and fled. Lefty SM was taken to a local hospital where he succumbed to his injuries early the next morning. Born on April 12, 1992, in San Luis, Colorado, Sonora, Lefty SM discovered rap music while working in his father's auto repair shop. Known for being left-handed, the rapper earned his nickname Lefty from his close friends. He began pursuing his music career seriously at 16, while still working as a mechanic. His final performance was on September 1, 2023, at Teatro Metropolitan in Mexico City. Lefty SM became a significant figure in Mexico's rap scene after opening his YouTube channel in 2017, amassing 2.5 million followers. His 2019 album, Avion de Papel, made waves, and his patriotic single, Por Mi Mexico, released in collaboration with Santa Fe Clan, gained substantial acclaim. A remix of this track was his final release before his untimely death. The rapper had collaborations with other giants in the rap industry, such as Nato Peña, Jerem X, McDavo, Tozer One, and Darius. His impact was such that his passing drew emotional responses from collaborators and fans alike. That Mexican OT, a collaborator from Texas, sent heartfelt prayers to Lefty and his family through a poignant Instagram post. Lefty SM leaves behind his wife Isa Mary and their two young daughters, Casey and Ciara. His ambition to venture into entrepreneurship and real estate remains unfulfilled, but his pioneering role in Mexican rap will be remembered for years to come. Tribute to Lefty SM. Number 9. Faye Fantero, a briefly shining star with an everlasting impact. Faye Fantero, the up-and-coming British singer-songwriter and protégé of Eurythmics' Dave Stewart, passed away at the young age of 21 on September 2nd at her home. The cause of her untimely death was a rare and aggressive form of brain cancer known as glioma, which she had been battling for a year. Her mother, Pam Fantero, and her official social media channels confirmed the sad news. Fantero was no stranger to life's hardships, having survived leukemia twice at the ages of 8 and 13. Despite these trials, she remained an effervescent spirit, dedicating herself to her art. Both she and mentor Dave Stewart hailed from Sunderland, England, and their artistic partnership yielded the well-reviewed EP AWOL. Released in February under Stewart's Bay Street Records, the EP included a standout single, The Weekend, Accompanied by a video filmed in their hometown, Stewart expressed profound sorrow at her passing, stating, She is one of the true greats, a northern girl on fire with her lyrics and melodies. I loved her deeply. Fantero once said, Life very rarely goes to plan, but the plan was always to write, sing, and perform, and I've been lucky to be able to do that. Her life may have been short, but Faye Fantero leaves behind an indelible legacy. The music industry and her admirers mourn the loss of a genuine talent, whose artistry will be forever etched in the annals of British music. Tribute to Faye Fantero.
Number 8. Edith Grossman, The Bridge Between Languages and Cultures Edith Grossman, a towering figure in the field of literary translation, passed away at her home in Manhattan on September 4th due to pancreatic cancer, as confirmed by her son, Corey Grossman. She was 87. Known for her revolutionary contributions, Grossman elevated the status of translators, once regarded as the humble Cinderella of the publishing world, into a vital force bridging cultures and languages. Grossman gained international acclaim for her translations of monumental works such as Gabriel Garcia Marquez's Love in the Time of Cholera and Miguel de Cervantes's Don Quixote. The latter was hailed as the definitive English version and firmly placed her name alongside that of the author, an industry first act of recognition for the role of a translator. She authored the groundbreaking book Why Translation Matters in 2010, effectively transforming the perception of translation from mere conversion to an artistic endeavor of its own. Born on March 22, 1936, in Philadelphia, Grossman was introduced to Spanish through an inspiring high school teacher. She pursued her passion, earning her doctorate in Latin American literature from New York University in 1972. Despite facing gender bias in academia, Grossman chose a path of intellectual independence, dedicating herself to translation full-time by the 1970s. Her work won her numerous accolades, including the Penn Ralph Mannheim Medal for Translation and the Officer's Cross of the Order of Civil Merit awarded by King Felipe VI of Spain. Grossman's dedication was such that even Garcia Marquez, whom she had a long-time collaboration with, teasingly remarked on her work on Don Quixote, I hear you're two-timing me with Cervantes. Survived by her sons Corey and Matthew and her sister Judith Ahrens, Grossman leaves behind a rich legacy that elevates translation to an art form and fosters international understanding. She might have been a reluctant traveler, but through her work, she took countless readers on journeys through lands, cultures, and thoughts otherwise foreign to them. Tribute to Edith Grossman Number 7. Paul Roach, a titan of University of Wyoming Athletics Paul Roach, the esteemed football coach and athletic director at the University of Wyoming, passed away on September 3rd at the age of 95. Roach had the unique distinction of holding both positions at the university simultaneously from 1987-1996 and left an indelible mark on the institution's athletic program. In his tenure as head coach from 1987 to 1990, Roach led the Cowboys to Western Athletic Conference championships in both 1987 and 1988. With an undefeated conference record in these years and an overall record of 35-15, Roach was twice named WAC Coach of the Year. His 700 winning percentage stands as the highest in school history. These accomplishments made him a two-time finalist for National Coach of the Year and led to his induction into the University of Wyoming Athletics Hall of Fame in October 1999. Before taking up his iconic roles at the University of Wyoming, Roach had a diverse coaching career that started in 1952 at Hedinger High School in North Dakota. He served as an assistant coach at various esteemed football programs, including the University of Wisconsin and NFL teams like the Denver Broncos, Green Bay Packers, and Oakland Raiders. Paul Roach's rich legacy extends beyond statistics and championships. He was a mentor to many and a cornerstone of college football during his time. His influence and leadership qualities have set a standard for excellence that the University of Wyoming and the broader sports community will remember for generations to come. Tribute to Paul Roach. Number 6. Tiawin Woodruff, a trailblazer for women in game design. Tiawin Woodruff, 
a pioneering figure in the male-dominated world of role-playing games and trading card games, passed away on August 28th from cardiac arrest at the age of 54. Woodruff's journey in the gaming industry started at the tender age of 11 when she played her first game of Dungeons & Dragons. In 1992, a fateful meeting with employees of TSR at a games convention set her on the path to becoming a freelance fantasy writer. She made significant contributions to TSR's Advanced Dungeons & Dragons adventure series and to Dungeon Magazine. Woodruff was a woman of many firsts, she joined White Wolf in 1993 as their first female game designer, contributing to flagship titles such as Vampire, The Masquerade, and Werewolf, The Apocalypse. She later moved to Wizards of the Coast in 1995 and claimed the title of the company's first female game designer. Woodruff had her hand in several well-known titles like Battletech, Netrunner, Magic, The Gathering, and Pokemon Trading Card Game. She continued to innovate after leaving Wizards of the Coast in 2005 to form Lone Shark Games, known for their giant puzzles at major events. In addition to her work in the gaming industry, Woodruff also freelanced as a TV writer and interviewer, particularly focusing on reality shows like The Amazing Race and Survivor. Her influence as a woman in the gaming sector was underscored in an article by Nicole Brodeur in the Seattle Times highlighting the rarity and necessity of her feminine perspective in the industry. Though her book, Galicia City Book, received an average rating and her collectible charm game, Star Sisters, earned four out of five stars, Woodruff's real impact was breaking through the gender barriers in game design, leaving an indelible mark for future female game designers to follow. Tribute to Tiawin Woodruff Number 5. David Watkins, a dual-code rugby legend and inspirational leader. David Dye Watkins, the iconic Welsh rugby legend, passed away at the age of 81 on September 3rd. Born in Blaina in 1942, Watkins achieved the remarkable feat of captaining both Wales and Great Britain in rugby union and rugby league, showcasing his versatility and leadership in both codes. He initially played for Abertillery, Ebu Vale and Pontypool before joining Newport in 1961, where he became a cornerstone of the team, scoring 294 points in 202 games as a fly half. Among the highlights of his career was leading Newport to a historic 3-0 victory over the All Blacks in 1963. Watkins was capped 21 times by Wales in Rugby Union, winning the Triple Crown in 1965. He also represented the British and Irish Lions six times during their 1966 tours to Australia and New Zealand. In 1967, he made a significant switch to rugby league, joining Salford for $16,000. Watkins excelled in this new domain as well, earning 16 caps for Wales and six caps for Great Britain, and even coaching the latter to the World Cup final in 1977. In his later years, Watkins continued to contribute to the sport he loved. He was one of the founding members and coaches of Cardiff City Blue Dragons in 1981, played a key role in reintroducing rugby league into South Wales, and was honored with an MBE in 1986. Watkins also served as team manager, chairman, and eventually president for Newport RFC. Newport RFC summarized his impact succinctly. One of the greatest players the club has ever produced. His loss will be deeply felt, not just by his family and friends, but by the entire rugby community in Wales and beyond. His legacy, however, is indelible. A dual-code hero, an inspiring leader, and a true legend of Welsh sports. Tribute to David Watkins. Number 4. Maria Teresa Campos, a pillar of Spanish broadcasting. Maria Teresa Campos, a renowned Spanish journalist and television presenter, passed away on September 5th at the age of 82. The recipient of numerous awards, including the Premio Ondas for Premio Nacional de Radio in 1980 and Major Labor Professional in 2002, 
Campos was a trailblazer in her field. Her impact on Spanish media was further acknowledged through multiple Antena de Oro awards in 1994, 2000, and 2015, as well as the TP de Oro in 1999 and 2004. In addition to these honors, she was awarded the Premio Clara Campoamor in 2007, Microfono de Oro in 2003, and the Lifetime Achievement Premio Iris in 2012. Campos was an iconic figure in Spanish journalism, known for her in-depth interviews and fearless reporting. Her work has left an indelible mark on Spanish broadcasting, setting the standard for journalistic excellence. Campos is not only remembered for her professional accolades, but also for her significant contributions to the community. Her legacy lives on in the numerous journalists she has influenced and the high standards she set in the industry. Tribute to Maria Teresa Campos. Number 3. Chaussée Cébeloué, a musical bridge between Guyana and France. Chaussée Cébeloué, former singer of La Compagnie Creole, and a Guyanese music legend, passed away on September 3rd at the age of 74. Born in Wanari, Guyana, in 1948, he first rose to fame in the 1970s with his group Les Popcorn. However, he achieved widespread acclaim when he joined La Compagnie Creole in 1975. During the 1980s, his popular hits like Vive le Douanier Rousseau, C'est bon pour le moral, and Le Bal Masqué resonated with audiences and led him to international tours. Sebeloué had a particular fondness for Canadian audiences, as he revealed in an interview tied to his 2019 album, 55 Ans de Musique. Throughout his career, he maintained a strong connection to his Guyanese heritage, saying, I adapted to the culture of the metropolis, but I never forgot my Guiana. José Sebeloué's music offered a blend of Caribbean rhythms and French lyrics representing a fusion of his Guyanese roots and adopted French homeland. His legacy endures not only in his music but also in the cultural bridges he built through his art. Tribute to José Sebeloué. Breaking news. News 1. In a startling revelation, 76-year-old action legend Arnold Schwarzenegger confessed that he nearly met his maker, not in one of his blockbuster films, but on an operating table. The Terminator and former California governor opened up about his harrowing experience during his third open-heart surgery, terming it a disaster. In an emotionally charged YouTube video, Schwarzenegger recounted waking up post-surgery to doctors admitting they had poked through the heart wall, causing unplanned internal bleeding. I was freaking out, he said. The emergency required surgeons to open me up very quickly to save his life. Schwarzenegger spoke candidly about his arduous recovery, sharing footage of his first steps down a hospital hallway, first leaning on a walker and later clutching a railing. It was a disaster. I was in the middle of a disaster, Schwarzenegger stressed. What I need to do now is I got to get out of this hospital. To emphasize the gravity of his condition, he revealed doctors warned that failure to exercise his lungs could lead to fatal pneumonia. His rehab involved walking just 10 steps initially, progressing steadily until he was fit enough to shoot Terminator Dark Fate three months later. Aside from being an action star, Schwarzenegger has been doubling as a wellness influencer. Earlier this year, he spoke to The Hollywood Reporter about his robust health regime and his plan to live forever. This near-death experience highlights the vulnerability even icons face, showing us that sometimes real life can be scarier than the movies. News 2. A shattered legacy, Hugh Douglas Jr. and Christian Files Jr., rising stars at Morehouse tragically killed in car crash. The Philadelphia Eagles community and Morehouse College campus are in mourning after the untimely death of Hugh Douglas Jr., the son of ex-Eagles defender and 94.1 whip host Hugh Douglas. He and his roommate, Christian Phyllis Jr., both 20, were killed in a horrific car crash on Monday evening in suburban Atlanta. Georgia State Patrol reports indicate their car veered off the road and struck two utility poles before overturning. 
Described as an exceptional student by Morehouse, Douglas was set to graduate in 2025 with a concentration in finance. He was a promising young man having interned at Aries Management Corporation and named a Goldman Sachs Fellow. Files was equally remarkable, majoring in business, co-captaining the track and field team, and showcasing a flair for photography and videography. Their untimely loss reverberates through both their immediate and extended communities. You were already a better man than me, mourned Hugh Douglas Sr. on social media. As these two young men were shaping up to be the epitomes of excellence and dedication, their sudden departure leaves an unfillable void and questions of what incredible impacts they could have made. First Lady Jill Biden presses pause on life's playlist. Amidst COVID diagnosis, classes, Invictus Games appearance on hold, as the nation gears up for the fall season, First Lady Jill Biden is hitting a minor speed bump on her journey, a positive COVID-19 test. While the White House assures she's only experiencing mild symptoms, the hiccup has led to a quick reshuffle of her bustling calendar. Dr. Biden's much-anticipated return to the lectern at Northern Virginia Community College? Postponed. Her planned speech at the send-off dinner for the U.S. team in the Invictus Games? Also benched. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden has tested negative and proceeds with a hectic agenda, including the Medal of Honor presentation and the upcoming G20 summit in India. Both Bidens are under the close watch of White House medical teams as they navigate this public health curveball. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Sarah Harding, a bright shining star in music and life. Sarah Harding, a beloved member of the popular girl band Girls Aloud, passed away at the young age of 39 on September 5th in 2021, following a brave battle with breast cancer. Her diagnosis was revealed in August 2020, and the cancer had unfortunately spread to other parts of her body. Her mother Marie announced the heartbreaking news on Instagram, describing her daughter as a bright, shining star. Harding skyrocketed to fame in 2002 as a contestant on the ITV talent show Pop Stars The Rivals. Despite being an underdog, she earned the final spot in Girls Aloud, alongside Nicola Roberts, Nadine Coyle, Kimberly Walsh, and Cheryl Cole. The band became a sensation, and Harding's vibrant energy and vocal talents contributed significantly to their success. Earlier this year, Sarah disclosed that doctors had informed her she wouldn't see another Christmas. Her bandmates, Nicola Roberts and Nadine Coyle, led social media tributes, with Roberts describing Harding as an electric girl who gave it everything and still with a smile. Many others in the entertainment industry also paid their respects, including former Spice Girl Gary Horner and Lewis Walsh, who both were judges on pop stars, the rivals. In her autobiography, Hear Me Out, Sarah candidly discussed the initial signs of her illness and the difficulty of facing it during the pandemic. Despite the challenges, she encouraged people to take health issues seriously. Her strength and courage during her illness provided a poignant layer to her already impactful life. Sarah Harding was born on November 17, 1981, in Ascot, Berkshire, and later moved to Stockport, Manchester. Her journey from a reality show contestant to a beloved music star exemplified her tenacity and talent. She was more than just her illness. She was a woman of remarkable strength, boundless energy, and immense talent who left an indelible mark on the hearts of her family, friends, and fans. Tribute to Sarah Harding. Number 1. Ricky Lee Reynolds, a founding pillar of Southern Rock in Black Oak, Arkansas. Ricky Lee Reynolds, the long-standing guitarist for the rock band Black Oak, Arkansas, passed away on September 5th in 2021 at the age of 72. His daughter, Amber Lee, confirmed the news to Variety and also shared it on Facebook. According to her, Reynolds had been hospitalized due to COVID-19 and had experienced kidney failure and cardiac arrest before ultimately succumbing to another cardiac arrest. Reynolds was a founding member of Black Oak, Arkansas, named after the band's hometown, joining forces with original vocalist Ronnie Smith 
fellow guitarists Stanley Knight and Harvey Jett, bassist Pat Dougherty, and drummer Wayne Evans. The band eventually settled on Jim Mangrum as their frontman, while Smith transitioned to stage manager. Known for their unique blend of rock, country, blues, and gospel, Black Oak, Arkansas found success in the 1960s and 1970s with three gold-certified albums. Their singles like Up, Gigolo, Hot Rod, and When Electricity Came to Arkansas earned them notoriety and even attracted criticism from some Christian groups for alleged satanic undertones. Reynolds left the band in 1977, but returned in 1984 and had been touring with them ever since. Reynolds' contributions to the southern rock genre and the music community at large make him an unforgettable figure. His talent, heart, and the love he shared will continue to resonate, creating an enduring legacy. Tribute to Ricky Lee Reynolds. to 12 notable figures we've sadly lost on August 22nd and in the days that followed. In our news segment, we'll delve into the devastating events in North Carolina, where a house explosion claimed the life of Tennessee Titans cornerback Caleb Farley's father. We'll also discuss the tragic incident in California, where Laura Ann Carlton, a staunch supporter of LGBTQ plus rights, was fatally shot while defending her store's pride flag. Stay with us for these poignant stories, and if you value our coverage, Please like this video and support.